Hi everybody, this is just a quick video for how to export a file in Lightroom. And if you've used Lightroom before, you probably know how powerful it is in terms of exporting and saving files quickly, saving and exporting multiple files at once, and that's something I love about Lightroom, opposed to other programs for editing, where you have to open each photo, edit it, and then save it, and then go to the next photo, open it, edit it, and save it. With Lightroom, you can apply all of your edits here to each photo, and then you can export all of your files at once, or you can export one file, um, or all of your files, whichever you want to do. So, as you can see down here in my film strip, um, I have all of my flagged photos, and you can see that they're flagged over here in the filter, and they each have a little flag icon in the left-hand side. And if you haven't seen my video on flagging and unflagging photos and how that can help your workflow in Lightroom, I would highly recommend checking that out first so you understand the importance of that and why I'm doing that. But flagging is really helpful whenever it comes to exporting your files because... I can have all of my flagged files and I can select all of them at one time and export them. But before we select all of them and export them, we are just going to work on one file and I'm going to export this one file first. So to export this one file, what you need to do is have it selected first and foremost. So you want to make sure that it is on your screen here um, and that it is highlighted. So after we make sure that it's highlighted, we're going to come up here to file in your top left hand corner and we are going to scroll down on that menu and click export. So whenever you want to export this little box will come up and it says export one file so we know that we are exporting. Um, we are exporting it to the hard drive and typically that's where I export just because it's easier and then I can do what I want with the files after that. So we're going to go through these menus together. First is export location. So Whenever I export photos, I always export them to a specific folder. I want to make sure that those files are going exactly where I need them to. And in my client workflow management, I have a file for each client who has their photos taken. So I want to make sure that these files export to that specific photo, or I'm sorry, that specific folder. So we're going to export it to a specific folder. And you can see that there's some other options here. Same folder as original photo, um, choose folder later. Um, I always go with the specific folder because I want to make sure it's exactly where I need it to be. So we're going to go with that. And as you can see, you can choose where you want it to go here. And I've actually already exported these files into a print files folder. So we're going to choose that and keep it as it is. But if you wanted to make a new folder, you could pull this back up and you could create a new folder um, right down here where it says new folder to export in. And this is for Mac, it might be a little bit different for Windows, but, um, or for other operating systems, but this is how I export on Mac. So, we're gonna keep it there. Um, you also have the option to put it in a subfolder, within a folder, add it to a catalog, um, and then existing file, ask what to do. Um, I usually just ignore that, to be completely honest, but uh, the next, uh, piece that we want to look at here is file naming. So this is really important and really cool because whenever you export your files from Lightroom, you can name all of them at once. So instead of you know having to type in the name over and over after saving each file, we can say I want to rename this file to custom name sequence. And this is how everyone's different. So you can choose how you want to name your files, but I like to stick with this right here, custom name sequence. So that means that I can put in a name. So um, this senior for the shoot, her name is Megan. So I might say Megan, last name, 2019, or the date of the shoot. And then I always write print because I want to make sure that I know that these files are for print. And then on top of this, with the sequence, it is going to export these files in their numerical order. So we're only exporting one file, so this doesn't really matter as much, but whenever you're exporting a bunch of files, like say for a wedding, whenever I export a couple hundred files, I wanna make sure that they're all numbered and that they're in their chronological order. So this is where it comes in handy. And you can also choose where you want it to start. So you might want it to start, the number to start on 100 and then start from there, but I always start and I want my shoots to begin with one. 
And as you can see, it gives an example of that file name here, which is really helpful. We're not doing video, so this window doesn't really matter. File settings, I always keep my quality at 100 because I want people to be able to print their files. Um, and whenever I deliver my files, I deliver high resolution files. But in file settings, you can also export as a couple of different types. So JPEG, PSD, TIFF, DNG, original. I go with JPEG because I want people to be able to print them. Color space, sRGB, I stick with um, because that is what my printer asks for. So the lab that I print professionally through uses sRGB color space. Um, and that's something you want to keep in mind whenever you're printing your photos. You want to make sure that you have the correct color space. And we might be able to talk more about that later and maybe do a video on color space, but there's a lot to talk about there. So we're going to move on next to image sizing. And here you can choose what resolution you want your photos to be. And if you want to use the files that you're exporting for print, you want to at least have a resolution of 300. If you're exporting them just for web, you can size them down and go with 72 pixels per inch. But if you want to print your photos, you want to make sure that all of the quality stays there and you want at least 300. And something else you can do here is resize to fit the image. So you can resize the long edge to 800 pixels. Um, if someone is asking for a specific size, you can do inches and you can make it, if they're asking for a five by seven and make the long edge seven, that kind of thing. So that can be helpful whenever you want to resize one image or a bunch of images quickly. You can export them to that size, but I'm going to keep this clicked off. Output sharpening, you can sharpen for screen. If you'd like, you can sharpen for matte paper, glossy paper, um, and then you can choose what amount of sharpening you want. I don't do this because I sharpen my photos the way that I want them to be while I'm editing. So it can definitely enhance photos for screen if you want to sharpen and help them look a little bit better on screen, but I honestly never use that feature. So we're just going to go with like the simplest type of export here. So metadata, um, I just remove the person info on these files and you don't really need to worry about metadata as much, but this is for keywording and for using SEO and we might be able to do more on that later, but we're just going for a simple export this time. So we are going to, um, go past this. You can also watermark in Lightroom. So whenever you're exporting, you can apply a watermark to one photo or to as many photos as you're exporting. So if I was exporting a wedding and I wanted all of the photos to be watermarked, say if I was delivering files to a florist for her to use on her website, I would want to watermark those photos. And say if I was going to export 30 photos to send to her, I can just click this and upload my logo and choose, whenever you come into this menu, you can choose where that watermark will show up and how big it will show up on your photo, which is really awesome. Um, I honestly do not use this feature that much, but once in a blue moon, I do, so I have it set in there. And I love this last menu because it's the post-processing menu. It says after export, you can choose what to do with the file. So you can choose what Lightroom does. So you could either do nothing, it just exports, and then those files are, you know, in the folder that you want them to be. You can have it show in Finder. So that's what I do, because whenever I export the files, I usually want to see them right away to make sure that everything went well in the export and just to see how they turned out. So that means whenever uh, Lightroom is done exporting, it will pop up, a folder will pop up with those files in it. So it's really helpful if you, you know, are going straight into blogging or you just want to upload those photos to your email or somewhere else, that kind of thing. And you can also do other things with those files here. Open in Adobe Photoshop, open in Adobe Photoshop, you know, CS6, open in another application or, you know, just keep it shown in Finder. So we are going to go ahead and export this file. And right after I export, and this is done exporting, um, it will pop up with that file. So let's go ahead and export and see how that looks. Now I already exported this file with the same name um, because I've already exported all my files from this shoot. So I am going to click here, use unique names because I don't want to overwrite my existing files. So I'm going to use unique names. As you can see up here, it's exporting and it popped up. So here's our fresh file that we just exported. Super easy, right? So that's
That is how you export one file in Lightroom. And say, for example, I wanted to export this entire shoot, which is something that I do often. I make sure all my files are flagged, and then I select all my photos. And on a Mac, the keyboard shortcut for selecting all the photos is Command A, but you can also click on the first photo. So we'll click on the first photo, and then what I can do is come all the way down to the last, hold down the shift key, and then click the last one. And that selects all my photos. Or again, you can do Command A for a keyboard shortcut on a Mac. I'm not sure what it is on everything else. But if I wanted to export all of these photos, I would just have to make sure that they were all highlighted. So that tells me that they're ready, something's ready to happen to them, they're ready to export. So here I would go File, Export, the same as before. And then I have this dialog box and it looks pretty good because we just exported. So whenever you export something, it saves the information you used in the last export um, and archives it so you don't have to go back and choose each setting individually. So as you can see, we're exporting to a specific folder. We're exporting um, here and we've already chosen it. Rename to here. Um, everything else looks good. And then if I wanted to export all of these files, I would just click export. Um, and as you can see here, it tells you how many files we would be exporting, which is 343 in this instance. So super easy. Um, it'll just pop up with those files again. I'm not going to export this time, but I hope that was helpful. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how you can uh, make your workflow a little bit faster with exporting files in Lightroom. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And happy editing.